Hi, this is Gordon Parker from Michigan Tech, and in this video I'm going to cover some basic concepts in generating differential equations for mass spring systems that are translating. Let's start off by just looking at the simplest mass spring system possible. I have a mass M connected to the left wall by some spring with spring constant K and, and an externally applied force, and we'll label that as Fe. Um, let's go ahead and, and say that this is the positive displacement to the right. We can break out a free body diagram, M, start applying the external forces, Fe. Oh yeah, we should remind ourselves that this is the positive displacement, X. As soon as we do this, by the way, we could actually put on this mass, or this free body diagram, the inertial force, mx double dot. And where that comes from is uh, Newton's second law written in this form, where we've taken the uh, inertial acceleration, or the um, inertial force, the ma term from the right, and put it onto the left. Finally, we can put on the spring force. And the way to get that is to imagine that we displace the mass a small or a large, doesn't really matter, um, amount in the positive direction, so to the right, and then we stretch the spring out a little bit to the tune of k times x. And that force is going to be pulling it back to the left when we pull this mass out to the right. Okay, and so now we can sum up all of our forces in this uh, in this uh, horizontal direction, we get mx double dot plus kx equals Fe. Okay, the simplest mass spring system imaginable. Now, the only question I want to leave you with, and actually we'll explore a little bit more if you want to, uh, what is x? All right, I labeled it here. I used it. I use it in the free body diagram and I created an equation of motion. But I never strictly wrote down what it is. If you know what x is, then there's no need to go any further in this video. But if you're not quite sure, then let's push on. So let me redraw this picture with a little bit more explanation. What I'll do is, is I'll draw a little ghost mass here and a ghost spring. Sounds scary but it's really not. And now we'll also draw the real mass with its externally applied force Fe and I'm gonna have to um, kinda disturb this nice picture a little bit by overlaying on top of it the spring for the real mass. What the ghost mass is is just the system sitting on the floor with no externally applied force and therefore no stretch in the spring. It's the unstretched configuration of the system. Now let's put a coordinate frame on here. And we know that if we're going to use Newton's second law, and here I'll write it in vector form, that A is not any A. It's the absolute acceleration of the center of mass of whatever body we're working with, in this case this block. And so in order to get an absolute acceleration, I need to have some definition of an inertial coordinate frame. So I'll just make one here. And let's say the center of mass is sitting right there. Now my acceleration, A, is the second derivative of this vector. I'll call it P for position and it's a function of time. So if I redo Newton's second law and I put it, I put this term over on the left like I did on the previous slide, it would actually be negative m p double dot equals zero. And the sum of the forces is all just in the um, capital X direction now, and so I'll be able to get rid of this vector in just a second. But let's keep going um, with this strange coordinate frame sitting over here on the left below the uh, figure. Now I could have put that coordinate frame anywhere as long as it's an inertial frame and not uh, accelerating. And I stuck it there just to illustrate a couple points. And let's do that now. 
I'm going to define this distance x0 and that's a constant and it's the distance from the y uh, axis of our inertial frame out to the center of the unstretched mass and then let's define this distance y0 as the distance from the x-axis of the inertial frame up to the center of mass in the, in the vertical direction. What that lets us do is create a nice representation of P. I know I'm going to need P double dot over here. Um, and I've, I've uh, shown P double dot as just a scalar. This is the vector form. I guess I did a little foreshadowing, but let's keep it as a vector for now. I know I'm going to need P double dot right there. So let's create P. Let's create a three-dimensional vector for P. Um, the x uh, coordinate of P is just, oh, let's see, I didn't use the funny x there, I used this x, x0 plus, well, I need to go not to this point, but I need to go to this point. So it's x0, this distance, plus this distance. And let's call that x. What that is physically is the stretch of the spring. And it is a function of time. x0 is just a constant. Uh, and then we have y0 and we have 0. Now when I take p double dot, I just get x double dot 0, 0. Now let's do the free body diagram. Let's see, I can put my external force on here. That's an easy one, Fe. Um, I suppose I should put uh, Mg here in a normal force, like so. If I'm going to keep the mass from falling through the, the tablet that I'm writing on. And we can also put the spring force on it. Okay. So imagine that I've displaced the mass like I've drawn in this picture right here. I've displaced it to the right by the amount x from the unstretched configuration. So this force is going to be kx pulling it back in that direction. Now the only thing I haven't put on here yet is the inertial force. And if I wanted to be kind of silly about it, I could just say, well, my inertial force is looking at this equation. I guess I could put that in vector form. Um, it would be negative mp double dot just in some direction. I don't know what direction it's in. I just drew a vector in some strange direction and labeled it as negative mp double dot. But I know that p double dot is just x double dot. And so when I also bring into the development this negative sign, I now know that this is my inertial force, mp double dot. So I can scratch this out. That was a temporary placeholder just so I could sort out that inertial force. Now, the other way to think of that, or to view it, is once I define this as being my positive displacement x, then I know that, and actually, I, I know that my inertial force is going to be in the opposite direction of it because of this negative, and it should actually be x double dot. There we go. So as soon as I define my positive displacement of x, I can put on my inertial force in the opposite direction. And that's what we did in the previous page. It's just sort of a um, uh, uh, out of habit, I guess. mx double dot, if I sum up all the forces in the uh, horizontal direction, plus kx equals fe. And that's exactly what we had in the other slide. But now we can answer this question. The question was, what is x? And now we know the answer is, it's the displacement of the block from the unstretched configuration. One last point. If you go back a page, if you've had any 
background in vibrations or modeling dynamic systems, you will have done this without even thinking too much about it, likely. You will have labeled it with an X, maybe developed equations of motion, etc. When you do that, the other thing that you want to do is actually state what this variable is, just like we did on the previous page. You just write down a couple sentences, and in this case, it's the displacement of the block from the unstretched configuration. That makes the problem complete. Thanks for watching. Again, this is Gordon Parker at Michigan Tech.